Hi, my name is Justin Brooks, and I'm here to answer the question, is this the greatest cinema zoom for independent filmmakers? I, I don't know. So real quick, who am I? My name is Justin Brooks. I'm a director and a DOP. I work primarily in television and feature film. My last film, Alone With You, I co-directed with my partner, Emily Bennett, and that's currently available on digital VOD and on demand. I also serve as the director of photography for multiple television shows and uh, various mini docs and a whole lot of stuff. I'm old, so I've been doing this for a while. So full disclosure, DZO did send me these lenses to try. They did not pay for this video. They've not given me any money whatsoever, and I don't even know if I get to keep these. I hope so. DZO, I hope I get to keep these. Uh, the truth of the matter is I've been kind of on the lookout for like a jack of all trades cinema lens, something that I can throw in my kit and have with me on multiple independent projects. For those of you that know independent film, you know that money is not something that we come by easily. So it's really good to keep our overheads low, but not at the cost of quality. We still want to be able to match a quality of film that can be seen in the feature film space. So we want the best of the best while we can't afford most of it. That is until recently, really. There's a lot of companies that have come along in the past few years that are really filmmaker friendly and really independently focused. People like Aperture and DZO Film and many others are trying to serve our community as independent filmmakers while not giving us a lesser product. DZO has definitely done just that with this set of cinema zooms. So when I say I'm looking for a workhorse of a lens, what exactly am I looking for? Well, obviously clarity is key. We want to make sure we have a really crisp cinematic image. That doesn't technically mean sharp. I think in the digital day, we've really had a problem with sharpness or over sharpness. We want high resolution out of our sensors, but where do we find ways to knock that down to make something more cinematic? Obviously the lens, or what's in front of the lens. A great deal of us have been compensating our digital sensors with black pro mist and various diffusion filters. Some people love to smear all sorts of stuff on their lens just to cut down on that sharpness, just to bring a little more life. Which kind of makes me laugh a little because now we're going into these lenses and doing these high tech tests and like making sure the sharpness is absolutely sharp and make sure there's no color fringing, no chromatic aberration. Everything is as clinical as possible and yet we want to create an organic look. That doesn't match up for me. So when I get a lens, I'm not going to go into it shooting graphs generally or doing all these charts. What I really want to do is start shooting with it. Now that is not to say I don't want to make sure this is a quality lens. I want to make sure my colors are consistent. I want to make sure there's sharpness and resolution. I want to make sure that these lenses are going to be able to perform when I bring them out in the field. But that is what is most important to me, is the feel. What does this look like? What kind of picture is this going to reproduce? Really, I want something that feels organic. It feels layered. There's something about a lens and its characteristics that, that kind of feel natural to you. And for me, to be perfectly honest, I find all of those things in these Kata Zooms. I travel all the time in my job so any piece of gear I take with me has to stand the test of time, has to be strong, has to be durable. I know there's a lot of what they call cinema lenses on the indie market there that are very plasticky, very light, very brittle, and should anything ever happen to them, they are just gonna smash into a million pieces. This is not the case with the Kata Zooms. There's no skimping out on quality. This thing is well-made, well-built, it's going to travel well, and it's going to last a long, long time. Like any good cinema lens, the gearing is the exact same between both lenses, meaning every time you switch the lenses out, you're not going to be readjusting all of your follow focus or your focus gears or any of that stuff. It'll all match up, it'll all be ready, and speed is absolutely key. Well, why cinema zooms? As an independent filmmaker, 
time is money. So by being able to use really solid, well-built cinema zooms, you're able to be quick, agile, constantly moving around, but it also really promotes playing, like really experimenting within the scene. You know, you throw a 35 on, but what if you wanted to move around on a 50 or a 75? What if you wanted to see what that looked like? Well, when you have a cinema zoom on, that's as simple as throwing that zoom gear. Like just feeling around, seeing what looks good in the camera. Now let's talk about ease of use. I've already talked a little bit about how easy it is to switch these lenses out thanks to their matching gears, but also they're parfocal lenses, which are an absolute godsend. Parfocal meaning no matter where you go in the zoom range, your focus will stay crisp and where it was set at. That is absolutely brilliant for those of us that like doing slow moves or slow zoom outs or zoom ins. You wanna make sure that your subject remains crisp and in focus while you do that zoom. With these kata zooms, you have both a parfocal zoom, meaning you're keeping your focus throughout the entire zoom range, but you also keep that constant aperture remaining at 2.9 wide open throughout the entire zoom range. Now that doesn't go without a little bit of work. One of my favorite things about these lenses is you can actually change the mount on the back of them. I have them currently set at EF because that's both of my cameras that I run with are EF mount lenses. But I also have the PL mount for them because I'm always switching into the Ari Alexa Mini, and that's the mount used with that camera. Now to be able to do this, you do need to take the back of the lens off and utilize the shims that are provided by DZO to make sure you remain parfocal. This is gonna take time. You wanna dedicate a good chunk of time taking that back off, putting some shims in, reattaching it, and testing it against the focus chart. So it does take time to really tune the lenses and make sure they work for your camera, but it's not terribly difficult. And DZO does provide videos on how to do this. If you can't seem to find any videos on how to change the backs of these lenses, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video for you. Now again, these lenses are full frame and I generally shoot Super 35. But because I have these lenses, no matter what camera I use on what set, I know that I'm gonna be okay and that I'm going to be covered. So cameras change year by year, constantly. We are going through cameras all the time. There's something new, something better, something bigger. And oftentimes the sensors are the big things that change. So you wanna make sure you have glass that's going to live through all of that. Buying full frame glass now, even though you may or may not be shooting on a full frame sensor, is going to serve you down the road. Big sensor cameras are just going to get cheaper and easier to come by. And should you wanna be shooting full frame down the road, you're gonna have the glass for it. So let's start talking about the look of these lenses and what I really dig about them. Essentially, I'm looking for lenses that have character, but don't get in the way of the story. The zooms bring something really special to the look of a film. In case you can't already tell, I'm a big horror fan. I make horror films. Many of my narratives are horror. That's kind of the space I love. And I love old 70s horror. And if you look at 70s horror films, zooms were everywhere. Whether it's being used on Invasion of the Body Snatchers or later on by Kubrick, all over The Shining, cinema zooms were so special and so clearly loved in that genre. And it's something I really love to reproduce in my own work. You want to use the tools, or at least similar tools, that they did back then. Cinema zooms were definitely in the package every time. What else am I looking for? Character, really. I don't want my audience to fully know they're looking through a lens. I like lenses that are able to disappear while still coloring the view. I'm looking for something that has something to say, but isn't just demanding attention. One of the first things in my tests I saw was the bokeh. Beautiful, round, clear, gorgeous bokeh. The bokeh stays beautiful and round throughout the aperture range thanks to the 16 blade aperture in the lens. 
This is absolutely gorgeous and creates some really beautiful effects both close to the lens and far away. And while playing with the bokeh within the lens, I really started to realize there's no focus breathing in these. Now focus breathing is something that kills me in a lens. When I said earlier that I want something that kind of disappears and something that doesn't telegraph that you're watching a movie, focus breathing is exactly what I'm talking about. It drives me nuts. Focus breathing is when you see the actual frame shift when you focus. It gets bigger and gets smaller. It feels like the frame is swimming within the lens. It is absolutely horrible and I cannot stand it. It's one of my biggest pet peeves for the lens. This is gorgeous, crisp, quick, no breathing. The focus is just smooth and works so well. So when you're doing those racks, you're not being distracted by the corners of your frame. A rack focus is meant to tell an audience where to look in the frame. You don't want their eye fishing around the frame because it starts just jelloing in and out. You want them to focus on, well, focus on exactly where you put that focus. You don't want distractions. You want it crisp, clean, and simple. Focus. Now, something else when it comes to a lens is the distortion. How does a lens distort? Now, I'm not somebody that wants a flat lens. I absolutely do not. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite lenses out there is the Cook S4. When people refer to the Cook look, they're actually talking about a lens distortion. The distortion in a Cook lens pulls things forward. It creates a real three-dimensional look, something that, to me, really looks like cinema. It draws us into the picture. So when I talk about lens distortion, it's not something I entirely do not want. In fact, I actually like just a little bit of lens distortion, and these Kata Zooms actually have that. It's very discreet, but it pulls things just a little forward. You can see at the wider end of the spectrum on the 35 millimeter, it has that nice pull forward. Now I'm showing you this on a Super 35 sensor and it's gonna be a little more pronounced on the full frame. But the point is when you actually film your subject, it's really giving that three dimensionality without being distracting. It's exactly what I was talking about at the beginning. I want subtle touches. I want the lens to have a subtle characteristic, but not something that really telegraphs it's a lens. The lens distortion is so subtle that nobody's really gonna notice it, but they will when they see how three-dimensional and how deep the image feels. Like I said at the beginning, I think one of the biggest pitfalls we get ourselves into when looking at lenses is going into these real clinical trials to make sure it's the most straight, most crisp, most clear, um, and honestly, most invisible lens possible but that suddenly feels clinical. When something doesn't have any touch or any characteristic, it starts to feel dead. It starts to feel flat. So if you look at all these great lenses that we have loved for so many years, it's about the character of the lens. It's about the subtle touches that the lens gives to the image. It's not about having a totally clean, totally clinical, totally flat image. In fact, that's quite boring to me and doesn't help me tell a story, doesn't help me draw an audience in. I need a lens that has something to say, but isn't screaming it at you. You know what I mean? Probably not. <laughs> I, don't, I don't make a lot of sense sometimes. But that moves me into the flaring of the lens. Flares are, well, you either love them or you don't, you know? You're either J.J. Abrams and you want that lens to just become a flower garden of flares, or it drives you nuts. Um, I would not sit in the Abrams camp. And in fact, I'm not an enormous fan of anamorphic glass. Uh, I would probably lean a little more into Deacon's territory where I like something to kind of uh, disappear a little. Therefore, lens flares are not something I run towards. That being said, I like it if it feels natural to me. Now, what does natural mean? 
who knows? What is natural to me is not to you, could be very different, but to me, these lenses have a really beautiful, soft, natural flare. Um, usually they let the light just kind of glow and grow off, and there's not a lot of artifacts, but when there are, uh, it feels appropriate. It doesn't feel sharp or stingy or in your face. And I've actually really loved blowing these lenses out and shining directly down these lenses and seeing what kind of artifacts or what kind of things these flares are gonna bring forward. And in fact, uh, in the piece that I shot with these lenses recently, I was shining a flashlight in these things constantly, really playing with the flare and seeing what different focal lengths are gonna bring forward. That's a really fun experiment to do with a flare. See what changes throughout your focal length. And when you have zooms with multiple elements in there, you get some really great creations. When it's right and it looks natural and looks clean, I love it. Also, one of the things that I'm really drawn to in a lens is more of a warmer lens. I, I like to lean towards something that's going to really let my skin tones pop. And these have a really pleasing look when you're trying to pull skin tones forward make things look natural and feel warm and inviting. It's a really beautiful, beautiful uh, roll off in these. Yeah, the color, I like it. I like the color of these lenses. I dig it. And lastly, the value for your money. I mean, the cost of these lenses are ridiculous. When independents like myself have access to cinema zooms of such quality, uh, at such a low price, it really allows me to compete. We are able to really stand up against the big boys with beautiful images, crisp, gorgeous, cinematic images on a cinema lens for a fraction of the price. When I'm shooting a film and I'm looking at gear, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is this going to help me tell my story? I wanted a lens that had a look had a feel, but was not screaming at you the entire time, not making itself known. It's putting just enough into the lens to pull and draw your audience into the narrative without taking them out of it knowing they're watching a movie. They allow you to sit back, eat your popcorn, and just enjoy something beautiful. So. I can't wait to continue using these lenses for the next couple of months. There's a ton of projects I have coming up that I am going to put these through the paces. And if you're at all interested in seeing more about those projects or these lenses, comment below and I'll see if I can continue making videos uh, for you. So thank you so much for checking this video out. Thank you for staying till the end if you actually did. Um, and I'd really love to continue doing this. So if you have any more questions, any ideas, anything you'd like to see from me, please put it in the comments, subscribe, do all the things. Uh, you know, I'd love to continue talking to you, really learning about uh, what you'd like to see. Um, and yeah, let's just have a conversation down in the comments section. Let's talk movies. Let's talk about uh, making movies. Uh, let's talk about shooting movies. Let's just talk about all things cinema. It's what I love, it's what I do, it's what I love to do, and uh, I cannot stop talking about it. So thanks so much. Really appreciate you watching, and until next time, see ya.